Hi. Yes, it's alkaline battery leakage time again. I thought we'd revisit this after my previous video, linked in down below at the end and up on the card here, if you haven't seen that, where I uh, go through uh, some long-term, like nine-month testing of various brand alkaline batteries to see if they leak. Unfortunately, that video didn't uh, produce any results. So I'm going to uh, redo it again. Yes, I'm glutton for punishment uh, with a different uh, testing methodology uh, this time. Check the previous video for how I did it last time. Anyway, I thought it'd be fun to redo it and maybe we'll get some results this time. Um, I just looked through like a random old battery box and I found this uh, Varta, this made in Germany Varta uh, battery and wow, that is a shocker. So what you're looking at here is a uh, leakage of potassium hydroxide from the battery through the seal in the negative end of the battery. And that's where the seal is. There's no seal on the top. That's why you'll never see them see, uh, like leak from the uh, positive terminal of the battery. And so that, seal, that eventually leaks out and then that potassium hydroxide forms with carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere and that forms all these little dendrite growth uh, crystalline structures that you see here and it's it's rather funky to look at actually i do actually enjoy looking at that and even though it kills all your uh gear that you've got these things in never leave like discharge batteries long term in your um any product because this could be the end result at least for um alkalines anyway this uh phenomenon is particular to the chemistry used in alkaline batteries but Oh, crusty. So once again, I just got a whole bunch of different uh, brands and stuff. Uh, these are the only energizers that I could get from my uh, local supermarket. They're currently, you know, in like social distancing lockdown. Anyway, so Energizer Max uh, Plus. I've got two different types of Duracells because uh, Duracells are notorious, of course, uh, for leaking. So I wanted two different types. Got the regular uh, Copper Top and the Dura Copper Top Ultra uh, as well. Then I've got uh, Toshiba Jobbies, i got Philips, i got Maxil, so all uh, quality brands. Uh, Panasonic that I used last time, two different Panasonics actually. One's the E-Volta uh, type, which is supposed to have leakage protection in it, so that'll be interesting. Uh, two different types of uh, made in Germany Varda ones. Uh, one's a high energy, one's just a long life job. And then I've got a couple of uh, just no name cheapies. I've got Wallaby, what do you wanna be? Wanna be a Wallaby? I've got uh, Coles brand, which is just like my local uh, supermarket uh, chain brand. So who knows who makes those and just some generic eBay one called Juice Bank. <laughs> And all of these have reasonable use-by dates on them. So that really the use-by date's not going to factor into it a huge amount. Um, although, you know, if they're expired, you wouldn't leave them in products. Uh, the self-discharge is uh, probably going to kick in. But anyway, um, it's not a concern for this particular test. They're all well within date. And for those curious, here are the batteries that uh, from the previous test. And I've uh, kept them in filing cabinet in there in the drawer and you can see that there is no leakage on any of them so even after all that time yeah bugger so the difference to last time is that i just had these battery holders here and i had one half discharged and one fully discharged because I thought like reverse charging one of the batteries might have done the business. And you can see in the previous videos um, that some cells did actually uh, reverse voltage. They reversed charge and that is actually a thing, but none of them leaked. So what I'm going to do is uh, before I had a uh, just this double A, um, two double A holder and a single 47 ohm resistor on here and I just left these on here indefinitely. And as I said, I think that load was too low and uh, it didn't have time for the pressure to build up inside the battery and hence uh, cause the leakage of the rubber seal or plastic rubber whatever material they're using on the negative terminal of battery and that's how it leaks out so I thought this time I would actually discharge the batteries either 90% or a hundred percent in quote marks um, and then put like a light load on it like a hundred K for example so a hundred one volt divided by a hundred K is 10 microamps and 10 microamps is a fairly typical like stand product standby 
uh, current figure. So I figure, like, you know, because you get uh, leakage in a lot of this equipment that has, like, soft power buttons and standby and things like that. Of course, you can get them with absolutely no standby power at all. But anyway, I thought I would... Uh, so I'll change these to uh, 100k... Please leave it in the comments down below if you don't necessarily agree with that limit, but meh, it's something, right? We've got to try something. But because I've already got a whole bunch of these things already made up, um, I figure I will use these to actually discharge the battery itself. Now, um, let's have a look at a data sheet for a typical alkaline here. We've got the Duracell Copper Top AA, nominal 1.5 volts, 120 milliohms at one kilohertz for those playing along at home. Yes, if you want to measure the true battery impedance, you have to measure it uh, AC at one kilohertz. Anyway, um, that's just a nominal figure. It's just like the ESR for capacitors, for example, is measured nominally at 100 kilohertz. Why? It's just a nominal figure. <laughs> it's just, you know, you've got to pick a frequency. It's just like, why does every oscilloscope have a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit? Even today, many decades after, you know, we've gone way beyond 20 megahertz analog bandwidth scopes, do they still have a 20 megahertz analog bandwidth figure? And why is that 20 megahertz uh, the standard for measuring power supply noise, for example. Check out uh, the <laughs> specification. I know I'm going off on a tangent here. That's what I do. Sorry, can't help myself. Check out a power supply data sheet. The noise, for example, we measured over a 20 megahertz bandwidth. Why 20 megahertz? And well, because scopes have a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit. Why do they have a 20 megahertz bandwidth limit? Nah, it's just a, it's just an industry value the industry picked um, and a de facto standard. Same thing here, one kilohertz, there you go. <laughs> anyway, so there's a couple of ways to discharge this battery. Could use a constant uh, current load, for example. I've got uh, several uh, proper electronic loads here, of course, and but doing but draining every one of these batteries could take like 24 hours a pop, for example, and I wanna do like dozens of these batteries. So I can string them all in series, of course, I can get uh, two of these per thing and I can like wire them all up in series and then do that because the load has, I think my load takes up, one of my loads takes 60 volts maximum compliance voltage or something or a couple hundred volts. Anyway, um, so I can string them all in series and do it that way. But the problem is uh, I don't know the exact capacity of these batteries and they're all different different brands and different types. So you don't want any to sort of like um, uh, reverse charge and be completely out. So what I thought, I've already got these made up. They've already got a 47 ohm resistor on them. I thought I'd just whack uh, two of them in series like this and hence I, there's less risk of one of them reverse charging, for example. Whack two in series, 47 ohm resistor, that should do it. So let's go take a look at the uh, curves down here and see how long it lasts. Uh, the Duracell, not all data sheets are going to have the same characteristic curves. The Duracells have constant current curves like this. Uh, these ones for low currents down here, 5 milliamps to 50, 100 to 1000 milliamps over here. You don't really want to draw more than an amp from a AA alkaline. Uh, because of the ESR up here in Kamigatsa. Anyway, we've also got constant power curves, meh, whatever, but bingo, constant resistance curves. This is what we want. And look, we've almost got one that matches the 47 ohms on here. We've got 43 ohms, meh, good enough for Australia, right? So I could use the 47 ohms on here, but unfortunately to discharge this thing, like let's say 90% of its capacity is lost at around that 0.8 volts uh, cutoff voltage. So we're talking, I don't want to have to wait 100 and, <laughs> what, 100 and plus hours uh, for these batteries to discharge. So I might just resolder these with say a 10 ohm resistor, for example, don't want to make it too low, but uh, a, a 10 ohm resistor and maybe constant resistance discharge them. That'll take, uh, say after 24 hours, or oh, maybe not 24, but say after 20, I'll come back after 20 hours and I'll check the voltage on the things and any that are like uh, really low, I'll have to uh, take them out or whatever. But yeah, I probably want to get it down to about 0.8 uh, volts or uh, something like that. I don't want to, definitely don't want to go beyond that. Basically, anywhere below 0.5 volts is like there's no, 99.9% of the capacity of the battery is gone. But not necessarily due to the electrochemistry. No, I don't have a battery here. This is a battery holder. Anyway, imagine that's a battery due to the electrochemistry on there and depending on how you discharge it and at what rate you discharge them, uh, you can actually uh, recover 
some of that uh, charge back into it after you've discharged it. So you might think you've discharged 100%, then you take the load off. If you discharge this vigorously, then you might find that uh, some of the charge, like 5% or something, you may there still might be like 5% left in there. Um, and or I'm sure all the chemistry experts uh, can explain why that's the case. But anyway, um, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I don't know, maybe like discharge them to a vault. Maybe something like, if I come back 20 hours uh, later, so I come back um, during the day tomorrow, it's, what is it now, uh, almost 3.30. So just after lunch tomorrow, I'll go around, check all, measure all the voltages on all the cells. And um, if they're around about a volt, I might actually take them out, say. And then I might do more. I might actually do another lot down to 0.8, perhaps because um, I want to get different types. I don't really know. This is kind of like trial and error here. I don't know whether I know at what point I can discharge them like fast. This is fast over 24 hours and then slowly discharge them with a 100k resistor, for example. So yeah, I, <laughs> I'm just going to suck it and see. And unfortunately, I won't know the results for months, <laughs> like many, many months, six months, nine months again, something like that. So uh anyway if you think i'm doing this wrong i can always uh if you uh, like don't just go oh you should do this like if you've got some other proof like, like technical documentation research whatever um from various battery manufacturers or somebody else that shows that you're more likely to get leakage if you do this particular discharge or whatever then please let me know leave it in the comments or send me an email or whatever because i need to like I, I've had a look and really there's not, I couldn't find anything. So it's kind of just suck it and see here um, pretty much. So <laughs> yeah, anyway, hopefully we'll get a result. <laughs> Murphy won't let me, but you know, we'll give it a go. Anyway, so basically, yeah, anything beyond 8.8 .8 volts, I think from memory it's like, um, you know, 95% of the capacity of the battery is gone at 0.8 volts. So that's what the batterizer tried to do. The batterizer tried to tap into that extra like 5% and get 800% the battery, the life of the, oh God. Let's not go then again. Yeah, that died in the ass. I think this website's still there, but, but I don't think they sold many. <coughs> they <laughs> didn't get that big Kmart order they wanted. Yeah, so let's just pull up some random curves here that I found. Uh, AA alkaline cells discharged at one amp. Here we go, you know, 500 milliamps or whatever. And you can see that basically once at 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volts there, you can see that there's very little area under the curve. We're talking, you know, like, as I said, like 5%. Tops and, and as I said, at the higher currents, uh, for example, like let's go, geez, one amp, you know, it's a decent discharge. And uh, no, oh, five, oh, what's wrong? Six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight is in there, just the line's gone. That's no, oh, that's got a reasonable amount of capacity left. I don't know, it's the area. But once again, you know, you're not going to get much more than five percent of the capacity left at uh, 0.8 volts. Some people might argue I should discharge it to 0.5, but. Yeah, no, no, I don't think so. I'd, I'd be happy with 0.8 max. Um, I might even stop it at a volt, uh, for example. So most of the capacity is gone, and then we'll just slow discharge it with our 100K resistor at 10 microamps or so. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's suck it and see. So I think the plan will be uh, two batteries of each particular brand and type discharged to one volt. And then I will, with the four, with the 10 ohm resistor, and then I'll put, I'll replace the resistor with a 100K. And then I'll leave both of those two in series of the same uh, brand. And then I'll just leave it for months and months and months as it slowly, uh, effectively, or not quite self discharges, but like really ultra low load. Like, as I said, like sub 10 microamps microamps uh, standby load and see what happens but I think I'll also do another two sets of each brand and type battery and then just leave them with no load or I might just yeah might as well do two because I got to discharge two at a time so I might just do two of each type so therefore I'll, I'll have four batteries of each brand and type. So this is quite a large uh, test. It's not, you know, but ultimately to get data from something like this, we're probably, we're really relying on luck here. We're relying on the characteristic manufacturing bell curve of the batteries to have like just outlying faults in the pressure 
vents in them. And that's really what we're trying to determine. So really, you, know, I, you really need like hundreds of batteries at each type to get, like to sort of guarantee a result that maybe, you know, like one of them's gonna leak or something. You know, you've got a, like a 1% failure rate. So one in a hundred, for example, might leak. So yeah, we're, I don't know. But if we can say get both of a particular brand, uh, leaking through uh, both of their negative uh, terminals, then that'll be a like a really good result, given the number of cells that we're actually testing. That's and that'll be positive proof that that particular brand has you know not so good manufacturing on their end seals, uh, for example. So anyway, that's the plan. But I. <laughs> Place your bets down below and set up a pool on the EV blog forum about and take your bets of how, uh, whether or not I'm going to get a result after six months. Anyway, any updates will go on my secondary EV blog 2 channel. If you're not subscribed to EV blog 2, there'll be a link down below and at the end. And you should subscribe to EV blog 2 because that's where I dump a whole bunch of videos which you'll never see otherwise. And don't forget to subscribe to my library channel because I might occasionally put. Uh, some uh, exclusive videos on there as well. If I'm going to make exclusive videos, I'm going to put them on my Patreon uh, account, my supporters section on the forum, and on my uh, library channel as well. That's the plan anyway. So there's already an exclusive video over there. You should go watch it on my library channel. Link down below. Anyway, fingers crossed. Catch you next time. Hello.